If anybody asks you just who I am, won't you tell them I am redeemed? Where there was hate, love now abides. Where there was confusion, peace now reigns. I'm walking with Jesus. I'm a child of the King. It's all because I am redeemed. I am. I've been bought with a price. Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, won't you tell them I am? Living Faith for Today is brought to you by Share the Vision Ministries and hosted by Pastor Joshua A. McClure, who shares weekly messages of faith and hope on radio station WBLQ in Westerly, Rhode Island. Pastor McClure is a dynamic Bible teacher, counselor, and award-winning author of A Learning Library of Nine Spirit-Inspired Christian Books and a tenth book slated for publishing in 2022, A Wonder-Filled Life. Along with this, Pastor McClure has written numerous Christian education resource materials materials, including a two-year Bible-based curriculum for church schools K-8, through adult, a men's Bible study, and PowerPoint workshops to grow and transform people into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. And now, here is your host, Pastor Joshua A. McClure. Welcome to Living Faith for Today. And we're delighted that you're here to share in the living word of the living God. And today, I would like for us to consider the subject, the indwelling Christ. The indwelling Christ. You know, for some time, I have been wondering what it would take to exercise all the power and strength needed to be every situation that would be encountered in our lives. And with that in mind, during my ministry, I sought power to preach, power for prayer, power to discern what was going on at a particular time, and power for healing, and power to face unexpected trials. However, no longer do I ask for these intermittent bursts of power, for I have come to the conclusion that if Jesus has all power, and he has, and if he is living his life out in me, and he is, And if he promised that when the Holy Spirit came, I would receive power, and the Spirit has come, then I already have the power and simply need to understand how to release it in my life. Please know that I am not being presumptuous, nor do I believe I am asking for what is unattainable, for the Scriptures assert that spiritual growth is for all believers in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. It says, Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. So these words assure me, it is God's intention 
that all believe in Christ would experience the fullness of life and power that emanates from God. So my question is, why do so many believers find the Christian life so difficult to live out? Why do we stumble around so much? Why can't we have and live every day in the power of the Holy Spirit? Well, the answer is quite simple. Yet there remains an us, an old nature that contends each day with the Spirit of Christ trying to occupy our heart. Now, before conversion, Satan lived in our hearts. We had only one nature, a sin nature. But now that Christ lives in us, we have a new nature under a new master. However, since the old nature is not completely eradicated and doesn't want to give way, the new self and old nature coexist. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17, Paul explains, The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your own good intentions. So here Paul describes the two forces fighting within us, the Holy Spirit and the sinful nature. And since feelings, evil desires, or inclinations stem from our old nature, they are always contending with the sure word of God. But please know that Paul is not saying that these forces are equal. For the Holy Spirit is infinitely stronger. But if we rely on our own wisdom, we will make wrong choices. If we rely on human effort, we will fail. Therefore, we must follow the Holy Spirit's guidance and must deal with the sinful nature and allow God to crucify it. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, Paul testifies of his own experience. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So what this indicates is the problem is not with God but lies squarely within our ability to understand what God has done for us. But what then does it mean to have been crucified with Christ? And how can we live in Christ that at the same time we no longer live? Well, as far as God is concerned, we died with Christ. So our death is an accomplished fact. For if indeed we are new creatures in Christ Jesus, his death guarantees our sins were nailed to the cross. And because our sins died with him, we are no longer condemned. In Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 2, we read, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Relationally, because of Christ's death, we have become one with him, and his experiences are now ours. And after Paul had considered everything that happened in his life, he held one conviction as to his greatest desire of all. Nothing was more important to him than what he states. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10, 
I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. To know Christ should be our ultimate goal. Yet how do we get to know him better? How do we attain to intimacy with Christ? Paul gave up everything, family, friendship, and freedom, in order to know Christ and experience the power that raised him from the dead. The question today is, what are we give, what are we willing to give up in order to know Christ? Will we change some of our plans, goals, and desires in order to conform to what we learn about Christ? Is it our greatest desire to become one with Christ, living morally renewed and regenerated lives? Well, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 24 through 25, we are told, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. And since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So the focus of Christianity is really not about dying, but about living. And let's face it, the Christian life by itself is impossible for you and me. The only one who ever lived it is now living it out in us. A supernatural man living in a natural body, in a natural world, accomplishing God's desires that Christ be fully developed in our lives. With that in mind, please take a moment and revisit with me your own moment of personal conversion. To say we receive Christ is rather misleading. When one thinks of the term, it implies that we seek or stalk after God, until we capture him, and then we receive Christ. This notion is distorted in that it is Christ who receives us. We seek him, we need him, we ask him to live in us, we surrender before him, and we did nothing and have nothing to offer. Yet, he gave his life for us. So in reality, God is a seeker and stalker. Therefore, if you open the door of your heart to Jesus, he will enter and receive you just as you are. That is who Christ is. That is what Christ does. He knows we are in need, and he knows exactly what we need. We are the needy ones who beg him to come into our lives. And without this understanding, it puts God's indwelling Son, Jesus Christ, at the mercy of our impulse and our whims. It suggests we can take it or leave it. If we're not ready yet, we can do it when we get ready. That, beloved, is not true. Who are we to accept Christ on our terms or speak as though by accepting Christ, humanity does divinity a favor. Or as if, by accepting Christ, we do God a favor. No. If you continue to delay, death awaits. The fact is, we are sinners. We need a Savior. And Christ is the Savior we need. So in spite of our sin and wretchedness, God, through his great mercy, accepts us and comes to live in us. And when he comes to live in us, 
we bow to him, leaving self and self-interest behind. And at that moment, it is no longer enough to explain ourselves owning up to our own names, but now we must own up to his name. No longer are we to simply say, I have accepted Christ into my heart, but rather, I have seen my sin and wretchedness. I have opened my life to Christ. He has accepted me just as I am. And he has taken a residence in my life. And the point is, once you know Jesus and are known by Jesus, the importance of your identity will lose its stranglehold on your soul. No longer will you live to satisfy personal ambition. Selfishness will give way to selflessness. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 31, I face death daily. Now some versions of the Bible say I die daily. But whatever words are used to describe the end of self, what Paul meant was he was daily cleaning egotistical living from his life that every day required a continual emptying of the old self, a pouring out of the ego, a pouring out of selfishness and self-centeredness. It meant the old self must give way for only when we are empty are we ready to be filled with something more than ourselves? The fact is, Christ cannot live in us unless the room has been prepared for us. The problem is, as long as we have needs, self is present and Satan is present. As long as we insist on our own way, Self is present, and Satan is present. As long as our efforts are all about what I can achieve for me, self is present, and Satan is present. Self or ego is a grand barrier that separates us from God and ruins our togetherness with him. Think for a moment. When self dies, there is no longer a reason for Satan to stay around. He doesn't have much success with dead men. And because of that fact, we can't cry out, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And because self has died, and because Christ has taken his place, and because the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, has come in me, Christ's life can now be fully developed in me. And the scriptures say in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14, he Jesus canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Beloved, what a gospel, what a word. It's almost enough to make you gasp, enough to take your breath away, enough to make you want to love Jesus more and more. It's a sweet gospel, an incredible gospel, and it's almost unbelievable that God would come from his eternal majesty in the heavenlies and take a residence where we live and knock on our door and say, hey, I'm your neighbor. But that's what he has done. God has come and made a home in our hearts. And he is living his life out in us. 
It's unbelievable to think the love of Christ in me rises to the heights of celebration and joy never known. Unbelievable to think Christ living in me is a love so deep it reaches to the depths of my discouragement, my despair, and even death. It's unbelievable to think that all of the fullness of God lives in me. The old self has gone. The new self has come. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The indwelling Christ. Every day, every moment, every hour lives his life out in me. Beloved, think of this and think of the wonderful, wonderful blessing that God has given us. And be blessed today. Be blessed today. Amen. We pray that you've been blessed by our radio ministry and will return again to hear words of faith and encouragement from the Word of God for Everyday Living. If you have questions or desire to contact Pastor McClure for help or comments, please send an email to sharethevision31 at gmail.com. You may order personally autographed books through the website at joshuamcclure.net or contact your local bookstore. For information on book signings, please call 401-741-2440. For those wishing to support our radio ministry, you may send a gift to Share the Vision Ministries, P.O. Box 304, Bradford, Rhode Island, 02808. Tell of His favor, tell of His love. His goodness to me He purchased my redemption With His own precious blood And from sin He set me free So I am redeemed I've been bought with Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, won't you tell them I am redeemed? If anybody Just who I am, won't you tell them I am redeemed? This is Judy Hall Gray for Share the Vision Ministries, reminding you to please join us at the same time next week for Living Faith for Today. If anyone asks you just who I am, tell them I am redeemed.